Hello all. Here is this a podcast summary on some of the key points about compiling, recording, and patient care uh, in, in general. So this is the first screen when you get on com compiling. Uh, you can see the summary here, and here is this kind of example patient uh, seen uh, January fifth, and this is. Uh, slide actually made by Dr. Goodwin. I'm just adding more slide and try to do a podcast on it here. So in this case, this is a quick summary. So one visit here, and then you have diagnosis and plan, and then you have medication the patient on, and you have the assessment, and then the plan, and also you can see return one week for thoracic to visual field. So it's a very uh, neat summary for the visit. So as the patient have multiple visits, then you can see a series of uh, visits based on uh, time that the patient is seen. So tip complaint. Um, tip complaint, you can feel uh, the slot right there, timing, location, quality, contact, severity, duration, sign, symptom, relieving factor, aggravating factor. So those are uh, Necessary information on compiling when, when, uh, whenever you see the more of an amber or a yellow uh, fill in uh, the blank area here. So in this case, the patient have two uh, chief complaints. And uh, it is important, uh, I usually uh, recommend the intern to actually write down uh, if the patient have multiple complaints. So that way, uh, at the end of uh, the visit, usually when uh, you try to kind of wrap up the day and you may forget the other chief complaint and you may just cover one chief complaint. So it's important to write it down and so at the end you have kind of a quick checklist, a checklist with the attending say okay the patient have uh, three different complaints so hopefully uh, both of you uh, can address all the comp uh, chief complaints for the patient. Ocular history, uh, do ocular history, in this case, past and present ocular history, as you can see, cataract, glaucoma, MD, eye injury, surgery, for instance, amblyopia. And then, uh, when was the last eye exam? Uh, how old was uh, uh, this current pair of glasses? Um, and then, whether the patient wear contact lens or not. And then, you go family history, uh, glaucoma, cataract, retina disease. Uh, systemic disease, called cancer, heart disease, high hypertension. Medical eye history review of systems, so uh, cardiovascular, respiratory, gastrointestinal tract. So a lot of this information may be already filled out by the patient uh, when they completed the intake form. And sometimes patients may show up a little bit late and they may take uh, quite a bit of time to fill out the intake form. So um, maybe it may be a good idea actually to go out and get the patient in the room and actually help the patient uh, speed up the process and fill in some of the required information in the intake form. Uh, vital here is important, especially for uh, p patient uh, greater than 12 years old, and usually you need to ask about height, weight, and also take the blood pressure, and you need to have all those three vital information for it to count as uh, an item for meaningful use. So a patient who is older than 12 years old and uh, have not been seen for the past three months, or uh, it's a new visit for instance. So. Whether the patient is current smoker or not, if they're a current smoker, then uh, try to ca counsel about cessation counseling. It's important part. Alcohol use, well, whether the patient uh, is aware of time, place, and person, and mood and effect here. You need to fill that out as well. So in terms of breed tests, uh, you need to do a VA. Yes, VA actually you need to be taken for patient on every visit even though the patient just come in uh, yesterday and then came back today for a follow-up visit you need to take VA because uh, the vitals for the eyes remember vision uh, pupil and if you dilate the patient uh, you want to also get angle but uh, pu uh, vision pupil pressure and then angle before you do dilation. Those are the vital uh, information for an eye exam. So if a patient uh, uncorrected VA is worse than uh, 20, 40, uh, probably it's a good idea to just do a pinhole to see uh, if it's better, if it's better, that kind of give you some evidence, say maybe it's a refractive error. 
need to do cover test on every patient and also especially i mean if you go do cover test and then you see an exo uh tropia exophoria uh it's a good idea to do mpc as well that can give you another piece of information to help you to diagnose if a patient have convergence insufficiency or not uh eom yes uh confrontation field yes and if you suspect that a patient may have a strict confrontation field uh, it's a good idea to do also an FDT kind of a screening, a 30-5 uh, FDT screening, which is relatively quick. Uh, and then keratometry, as you can hear, see there, especially if uh, you want to check for keratoconus corners or not, or if you want to fit the patient with contact lens. And now they uh, auto refractor also do auto keratometry, but if you want to polish your skill into manual keratometry, you should do uh, a few patients from time to time. A uh, refraction, yes. Uh, the first first place to to start with refraction is actually that with the habitual know the power in the lens. So because it kind of helps to serve you as a reference or baseline to start to do a refraction. So if you have the habitual uh, glasses uh, power and then the patient may be 20-25, then you kind of know that, oh, this patient probably may need only maybe uh, a half diopter here and there change, not not too much of a change. So, so it kind of gives you an idea uh, where to aim for. And also, it can kind of serve as a, a good idea when you have a change in a new prescription and to see if the change makes sense or not. So it's always a good idea to know the habitual compared to the final acts that you're going to, going to give. And also another thing you want to do is this uh, trial frame and compare the new pair with the old pair. So that way the patient can appreciate the change if there's uh, a significant change. Visual analysis, yes, um, collect as much data as possible, especially new patient, young patient, a patient with having more of a vision, a visual related uh, type of symptom like headache, eye strain, and a young patient, first encounter in a sense. Also another first encounter that you want to do for young patient is that stereo. Uh, acuity, stereopsis, and also color vision if, if patient is a boy. So take as much information from visual analysis as possible, but if for instance you do the exam and you're kind of running late and running out of time, then you probably need to focus on uh, those pieces of information that back up your uh, finding in terms of chief complaint or in terms of B-test. Like for instance, if you find a patient have like a uh, complaint of, of eye strain, headache, and you B-test, you find like uh, 10 exo at near, then probably it's a good idea if you don't have time, then at least you need to do like the uh, versions for the base up type of conversion testing to help to support the diagnosis. Anterior segments, yes, uh, remember to do the lid and lashes as well before uh, checking the eye and the cornea and when you check the eye and the conch and the cornea make sure you uh, lower the uh, lower lid and uh, upper lid, uh, raise the upper lid to check also the inferior and superior palpebral conch um, and then check for the angle of Van Herwig before uh, talking to the attending whether to dilate the patient. So the next one is IOP. So IOP usually for young patient probably you can go with NCT. Uh, but then if you do NCT and the pressure is, is above 20 for example, or uh, there's significant asymmetry between the eye like uh, more than uh, two or three millimeter mercury, then it's a good idea to verify with Goldman because Goldman is still the standard uh, for tonometry. Also put the time of the um, measurement. If the patient actually have multiple have IOP, then you can actually click uh, on the flow sheet and then you can see the range of the IOP over uh, the previous visit and that can give you an idea about the fluctuation especially for glaucoma uh, patient. Posterior pole, uh, check the lens, make sure you examine each um, uh, layer of the lens, the capsule, the nucleus, the cortex and then evaluate uh, the vitreous and uh, evaluate the disc and then the posterior pole and then the peripheral retina Action plan, 
We'll get to action plan soon. But uh, for a patient in terms of the medical eye care situation, you may see a patient with diabetes. So here are some of the guidelines for a patient with diabetes. I also uh, posted up the uh, charting guideline that you can review too. You can print out a copy and keep it with you. So for that uh, diabetic patient, you want to know A1C of the patient now, fasting blood glucose, random blood glucose, uh, when was the la last time um, they had um, visit with the primary care doctor, whether they are on insulin or oral medication, whether uh, they had a previous diabetic retinopathy, any previous laser treatment. Uh, and Amstel Credit is actually a good uh, test to do in the office, a quick test because that kind of help to rule whether there's any distortion in the vision that kind of help uh, indicating whether there's some uh, clinical significant um, macular edema or not. Photo, fundus photo, uh, need to be done in a sense for first uh, diabetic eye exam as baseline uh, for a uh, baseline uh, visit and uh, if you suspect of like for example edema OCT uh, would be warranted it doesn't have to be done in the same day it can be uh, rescheduled for patient back for the imaging and letter to PCP if the patient is referred uh, and um, if the patient have more of a severe, uh, like proliferative type of situation, or severe non-proliferative, or some clinical significant uh, macular edema, then maybe it may be, may be a good idea to actually uh, write a formal letter as as needed. Macular degeneration, Amster grid is helpful to try to differentiate whether it's a dry AMD or wet AMD with uh, distortion in vision. Smoking cessation is uh, called for whether the patient is on current a -reds vitamins. And talk about a -reds category, whether the, the patient uh, aware of the a -reds study. For glaucoma follow-up, so here's just a problem focus unless the last exam state otherwise. Add a glaucoma time in compiling and go through the old chart and pull out all the visual field OCT GDX for reviewing. Find tag pressure range if set at previous visit and pull it forward. Find pachymetry from previous visit and pull it forward. Make sure flow sheet within the glaucoma time is up to date. Uh, all additional testing must be ordered and interpreted in order to get paid. Digital signature are required for attending, for building. When was the last time patient was dilated? And this is important. A lot of glaucoma follow-up uh, may happen without paying attention to uh, when the patient was uh, dilated last time. And the patient maybe just keep being followed for uh, multiple years, a few years before they uh, get a dilation. So dilation need to be done once a year. Okay, action plans here. Here's the purpose of action plan. It just actually give a summary of the purpose of this visit. So this uh, purpose of this visit in this case is complete, complete vision exam. Okay. So here are some points that Dr. Quick will have shared with with you guys uh, intern who is coming to become third year intern in summer. So you should have a diagnosis listed for all applicable diagnoses under each of these they that Dr. Dr. Goodwin have have uh, come up with here. So here is the first one is myopia. So you have blank in assessment because you already have it in the list there. And then you have your plan. And then the next one, same thing, anisomotropia. Next one is convergence, excess. And next one is common migraine, uh, blank in assessment, but then there's plan for it. And then the last one, leave blank. So then you can have summary of all the assessments and plan. And then you just have one return uh, one week to a clinic for visual field and and uh, test for virgin's facility. Okay, that's it. Thank you.